With wedding season upon us, it's time to talk about how we're going to stay on top of our workflow. If you haven't started using AI to expedite your editing yet, that's probably why you're here looking into it. I had the chance to meet with the founder himself to hear what Aftershoot has been up to since Jackie's shot kit review two years ago. I'm actually new to Aftershoot, so while I'm focusing today mostly on the latest updates of Aftershoot Edits 2.0, I'm going to give some overall impressions as well. The new features we're going to see with Aftershoot Edits 2.0 are a tab bar where we don't have to leave Aftershoot between import, culling, and editing, AI cropping, masking, and improved straightening, upgraded AI models for white balance and exposure, creator styles, which is basically AI meets presets, and compatibility with numerous editing programs from Lightroom and Photoshop to Capture One. Aftershoot boasts consistent edits every time, so let's dive in and see how accurate that is. Now, I'm a new Aftershoot user, but I know that the way the AI works is that it'll learn from my editing style as I make tweaks. Basically, the more you use the tool, the better it gets at editing like you would, as long as you upload your fine-tuned catalogs for improvement. But we have to be able to decide if it's worth investing the time and learning a new software, even though we're investing time in something that has the potential to save us much more significant time. So the first thing we need to do in order to start using Aftershoot is to build a profile. I built my profile using 3000 edited images. The process was pretty straightforward. And let me tell you what worked for me. I made a Lightroom collection of my favorite images from the last three or four years. We've maintained a pretty consistent editing style during that time, and these favorite images are images that would have been more heavily edited since they're portfolio images, or they're client favorites that I would have spent more time on. They are also images from a wide variety of lighting situations. So between the fact that I have a large collection of e images edited in a fairly consistent editing style, and they're from a wide variety of lighting conditions, I figured that this would give Aftershoot the best possible chance of editing in my style from the get-go. So I exported the collection as a catalog to put all the images in a catalog that I could send to Aftershoot. Finally, I dragged the collection into Aftershoot for it to train my style. It took a second for me to figure out how to select all the images, but one cool thing to note is that you can upload as many catalogs as you want at one time. So depending on how your Lightroom catalogs are arranged, that can be super helpful. Or if you can't upload all in one go because you don't have enough images yet, you can upload smaller catalogs and they'll store on the server until you reach that 2500 number that Aftershoot needs to start training your profile. You can also filter it a bunch of different ways if you want to train it based off of a certain camera, for example. Maybe you switched from Canon to Sony and you want to train your profile based on your more recent photos shot on the Sony cameras so that your color will be more accurate going forward. So there's lots of ways to customize this upload process. This took a couple of hours, but you can just leave it to do its thing and we should only have to do this once when working with Aftershoot. Then we receive an email when it's done. Our next step is to import. We import the photos that we want to cull or edit. The import process is super easy. It's just a drag and drop into the program. It's also pretty quick to import. Uh, okay, so you notice at the top, there are three tabs, import, cull, and edit. So as soon as it's done importing, we can just go to the cull tab to start culling or the edit tab to start editing. For the sake of this video, we're going to jump right to the editing. Aftershoot Edits 2.0 edited my photos using my AI profile built for my edited images. I do think the success you see with my edit has to do with the fact that I have a strong and consistent editing style to upload for building my style, and it's across those numerous lighting conditions. So if you don't get the same results, it might just take more time to teach and refine your style. Or if you don't have a strong style with 3000 images to upload, you can upload a preset or use one of the free presets or creator styles in order to get started. So creator styles are like presets meet AI. They are trained AI profiles from other photographers. And a cool thing to note is that Aftershoot gives 100% of the profits from the creator style to the creators. So for example, you can edit in the bold and fashionable style of Lily Red or choose one of Joy Zamora's profiles. Now everything is written to XMP, so I can simply bring this wherever I want to bring it. You can open it in Photoshop, Adobe Bridge, Adobe Cloud, wherever you normally like to edit photos. It's pretty much compatible with everything, including Capture One. I'm going to open this in Lightroom so we can see our edits. As you can see, Aftershoot did a great job with my edits. The white balance and exposure are just where I want them, even in some of the tricky lighting conditions. For example, look at this first look image where Aftershoot was able to expose properly for the subject rather than splitting the difference and achieving nothing. 
It somehow knows that she's the subject and therefore she's properly exposed. Had it tried to split the difference, the photo would have been less impactful. The straightening was accurate and looks great. Uh, we're not personally heavy when it comes to cropping. I often try to crop in camera or I'm cropping intentionally based on a creative final impact. So I didn't select the aggressive cropping option and the minimal cropping after she did was great. I like that I could choose between aggressive and minimal based on my own personal style. The masking was where I ran into some trouble when syncing with Lightroom. However, I was able to message with Aftershoot's in-app support that runs 24-7, 365 and have them help me. They were super fast and responded with tips to resolve my problem quickly. The subject mask is individually adjusted on each image and in all the settings, exposure, contrast, color temperature, etc. One thing to note is that the tone curve didn't seem to be doing anything, but I figured how, how to go into my AI style in Aftershoot and update my style to include some fixed values to lock the tone curve setting to my preference. The main differences between how I had previously edited these same images and how Aftershoot edited them on the first trial were basic things like cropping and spot removal, which you probably need to do yourself Anyway, Aftershoot doesn't know when to crop out something undesirable in the background. And I'm not sure if it would have cropped how I wanted it to on the aggressive crop setting. So that's something that I would probably go deal with myself anyway. Um, it can't know my cropping preferences on where to get in close without chopping off fingers or other pet peeves I have when it comes to cropping. So those are things I'd have to run through and do on the most important images myself manually anyway. So let's break it down and summarize what we think of Aftershoot's edits 2.0. If wedding photography is your main thing or a large portion of your photography business, culling and editing thousands of photos after each shoot is a large portion of your time. So AI culling and editing software options are getting more popular as they get more consistent and reliable. And the idea is to save us time without sacrificing quality. And if that's our goal, then the question is, does Aftershoot deliver? So let's first talk about the ease of trying out Aftershoot. So using Aftershoot isn't easy per se, but it's also not that hard. What I'm saying is that there's a lot to learn and you need some photos to upload for it to learn your style, but it doesn't really take more than a day to try everything out from importing to culling and editing. And you could even test things quicker with a smaller project. And I saw later that you can choose how much of your system resources you want to use for the cull, which I, which I imagine would speed it up if you needed it to. I love that you can import cull and edit all right in Aftershoot with the three tabs up top, so no more opening and closing different programs. But when you do want to bring things into another editing software, it's as easy as drag and drop. So essentially trying out the editing is super easy as long as you have a catalog from which to build your style, or again, you can always use one of the creator styles. So now beyond the trial, what were the actual editing results? Aftershoot Edits 2.0 is slick and it edited my photos exactly how I wanted it to without much effort once I build my profile. As you saw, the white balance and exposure were just right, even in super complicated lighting conditions. The subject mask is individually adjusted on each image. Anything that wasn't right, I can easily tweak and update my style for next time. I definitely got very consistent edits and very impressive time savings, as promised. That brings us to the question of price. The Aftershoot's price model gets you unlimited editing. So this is super nice if you wanna have a predictable fixed cost for editing, or it's really useful if you run a high volume business. Reality will set in if you crunch the number on your business and how much time and money you save. In a busy wedding season, the unlimited pricing model is pretty hard to beat. So even if you've tried Aftershoot before, you can hop over and get a 30-day free trial to check out what it's like to edit with the new Aftershoot Edits 2.0. And then after that, use the code EDITS20 for a 20% discount at checkout. Let's talk through some of the differentiating factors between Aftershoot and some of the other competitors. The pricing model is definitely a differentiator compared to other options because it's unlimited. You don't have to spend more money simply because you're working more, which you will be because you freed up all that time that you used to spend editing. And another thing I haven't really mentioned yet is that this editing all happens offline. So this is really great flexibility if you wanna be able to edit on the plane or somewhere where you don't have Wi-Fi. You still need Wi-Fi to have it learn your editing style at the outset, and then again, whenever you go to send photos to your clients. So don't go off the grid just yet, but this sure opens up the doors for expediting your workflow. I didn't edit on Aftershoot before the updates with Edits 2.0 to know what it was like before, 
But the Aftershoot Edit's 2.0 capabilities were great, and there's not even anything to complain about. I love how customizable and powerful it is. Like I can select how aggressive I want the cropping based on my preferences. Or I can edit and adjust my style by adjusting values to tell it, hey, next time everything needs this much more contrast, or here's the values I want for my tone curve. And then everything will get better as we edit more weddings and after shoot learns from our style. So just as some final thoughts, I wanted to note that every interaction I had with the team over at Aftershoot was positive, showing that they truly care not only about being innovative, but about having a great customer experience. As a wedding photographer, customer experience for my clients is everything. I make sure they're having the best day of their lives. So I love interacting with a brand that's turning that same customer service on photographers because we deserve a little customer service too, huh? I really enjoyed the overall experience of using Aftershoot from meeting the founder to ask questions prior to this review, to exploring the culling tool, to expediting my editing workflow. Don't forget about that free trial to check out what's new with Aftershoot Edits 2.0. Let us know what you think here at ShotKit and then use Edits 20 for a 20% discount at checkout. I'll put any links in the description below. I think the main challenge with Aftershoot would be for a photographer that doesn't have a consistent editing style over a variety of lighting conditions because it would take longer to train. But again, you could always use one of those creator styles as a starting point to kick it off. And I think it'll still be worth it over time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.